boy, here we go again. Maybe there's a mermaid mini game. Yes, yes. Now we're talking. Now we're thinking in terms of rebirth. Everything's a mini game. Would you mind rounding up all the mooglets for me? I'm glad there wasn't another cutscene where they like re-explain this. They were just like, "All right, go." What? How do I get him if he's in the water? Oh, this is awful. I just lure him into a whirlwind. I don't want to do that. I want to lure him to where he's supposed to go. Two for one. Why did it need to give me a tutorial the first time I got hit on how to dodge? Just tell me that at the start if you're gonna tell me it. Don't stop the gameplay the very first time I get hit. Moki. What's he doing? Friends walked into me playing the Moogle House minigame and I had to assure them I was playing a serious game. Couldn't you say that about like literally 95% of this game? For bringing all the Mooglets back. It's such a relief the Emporium that Mog and Mag built together won't have to I can think about a hundred different situations where someone could walk in and I'd be like, no really, it's just serious. Pretty much almost everything we've done this entire day has had that. Okay, Precision Defense Materia Earrings. And some books. Wow, I'm one medal away from getting everything. That I'm doing this, but I think I'm going to do this for the other metal. Please bring back all the mooglets for me, Koopo. So I don't want to come back. <laughs> My stepdad walked into me during 10 2, and now he doesn't take me seriously during family get togethers. to see it. in on me during the Red 13 Shin uh, boat cutscene. And our relationship hasn't been the same since. Yeah, it's, if you can do it right, it's a lot faster to not use the whirlwinds. 
but it doesn't really matter how fast you go. There's no timer. Would I buy a cute Moogle plush? I've always wanted a Moogle plush and a Tomberry plush, but they're like $500 on their store. I honestly do not think I'd want a plush of these Moogles, though. I think if I had a plush of this Moogle, I would be afraid it's going to kill me in the middle of the night. Please shop to your heart's content, Kubo. I would be genuinely worried for my safety. Feel free to drop by any time. These Moogles kind of terrify me. Final Fantasy 9 Moogle or Final Fantasy 16 Moogle? About 10, uh, or no, uh, 13 2 Moogle. The one with the little time staff, that one's pretty cute. I feel like 9 Moogles are probably the best though. Final Fantasy 6 commercial Moogle. Hmm, how do we get up here? Nine definitely has the best Moogle characters, but if we're just talking with the looks, I would say, like, probably still nine or 16 is good, too. But nine by far has the best Moogle characters. I don't think it's even a competition. They're like so ingrained in the actual story. They're like everywhere. They're not just save points. True, you do have Mog in 6, who's an actual character. But yeah, I think I think even then 9 still utilizes them better. I agree. They probably just have to swim through there, huh? Yeah. Corel's divine sanctuaries can bring knowledge of the summon entity Alexander. Long ago, a great but wicked nation prospered in Corel. Legend tells that it was wiped out overnight by a giant mechanical construct. A construct called Alexander. So, I had said in the previous area that I didn't really understand the purpose of the rocks and the owls. Because it shows you exactly on the map where the thing is. You don't need something to take you to it. But they've done a lot better in this section, hiding the stuff to where, like, you kind of do have to hit the rocks or follow the owl to find them a lot of times because they're in really secret locations. So that's cool. Yeah, the areas in general are just getting more complex. You think the owls were like a, um, a, a QA thing? Analysis Maybe. Complete. I don't think so, though. I managed to extract the necessary data from the crystal. This should allow me to strengthen. But very possibly. Ah, oh, this song. Looks so goofy as a team. This team's gonna save the world.
No shot. <laughs> It's crazy, man. The divine intel and the regular intel. I just want to sit and listen. Yeah, I would say that the regular intel minigame is the worst minigame in the game. Not that it's really, like, awful or anything, because it takes, like, two seconds to do. But... If I were to pick what was what's the worst one, it'd probably be that one. You just hit triangle three times and it's the same every time. They could have at least like changed it. Could have been like an extra triangle every time or something. Or like throwing a throwing a circle or something. <laughs> Some Bioshock tubes. Or anything. Out of service. So we've got a walk? You'll be fine. Fresh air, nice view. The view ain't all that. Not unless you enjoy staring at ruined reactors. Right. You grew up around here, didn't you? <sighs> Let's get a move on. Here we go. Materia is like super condensed Mako or something, right? So? So? That means. Wherever we find Mako, we'll find Materia too! <laughs> Alright, timeout's over, team. Let's go! The Barrett arc begins. You know, Yuffie, when you're part of a team, you can't just do whatever you feel like. What? So, does that mean I gotta run everything by you first? Yep. So that's the game. Fine. Permission to sing, sir? What? Permission to scratch my back, sir? Permission huh? to blow my nose, sir? Huh? Can we get permission to yawn yet? Well, do I get permission or not? So, you can do it while you're warm in the bed. That's an abuse of power. Tyrant, tyrant! Gah! Tell me your secret. How'd you put up with this jerk face? <laughs> His good qualities outweigh the bad. Yeah, by how much? Like 51% good guy to 49% jerk face? Maybe a little more than that. So what, like a 55-45 split? Close to. Not you too, Tifa. Okay, now that they're stopped, done talking. What is this jam? Why is Aerith all the way back here? I feel like I feel like this song was supposed to be the song for the previous area and the previous area song was supposed to be the song for this area because that's the actual music that plays on Mount Coral but then they were like nope this song is such a banger we gotta put it on the mountain <laughs> cause like holy cow Because it would make more sense for that music to play here, but I think Aerith might need a I'm glad we got this instead. Sorry. My legs are oh, that's me. why Aerith's all the way back there. Let's rest here. But if we stop now, the material I mean, the mystery men might slip away. Hey, I know what to do. I'll go on ahead and scout the area for us. You guys can catch up later. Well, see ya. <laughs> catch up later, my. I think I'd better go keep an eye on him. Barrett's not himself right now, you know? I know. Take your time, okay? No need to rush. 
Thanks. Will do. I'm really liking these forced party changes because there's so many party members and again, there's kind of a good reason to just stick to the ones you like, so uh, I like that they're forcing us to try different party uh, assortments, you know. Ooh. God, this song. Oh yeah, I didn't even use the Empress Scepter. Conjure a ward that grants invincibility while casting spells and strengthens Aerith's basic attack. Oh yes, the Lustrous Shield. I had like one use for this thing in Remake, but it was a pretty good use. This thing has five slots, and it looks sick. Hey, we got two slots with Aerith now. You can have... this. Lightning damage up. I, you know, this seems like almost useless because the wards last so freaking long in this game. I had that one ward up for like the entirety of the Phoenix fight almost. And the the fight I had with um, Alexander, where we took like forever to take out the legs, it only went away like right before I lost. Ooh. I think I'll do these two. Actually. I like this idea. You know, I just realized there is a pretty big downside to the double materials, they take longer to level. How does this only have 89 AP? Ooh, lightning and wind material with elemental gives you protection against both. And think about that. That's another sweet use. Silver collar for you now. Retaliate with ice shards whenever hit by an attack. Charges a vengeance gauge when a counter strike lands. got a lot of good ones. I'm gonna go with that, though. Oh, man. I can do magic up now. Dang. 
170 magic attack on Cloud. What? Magic attack by 20. Don't mind if I do. Speed by 30. Ooh, Phantom Fang sounds good. Also looks really cool. Wait, what was that? Yuffie's already got a bunch of stuff. That was in Remake, right? I forget what it does, though. Is that the... Oh, Deep Attack. Wait. What? Why does it say Yuffie has one? It says Yuffie has one equipped, but she doesn't. I've been lied to. I've been Smeckledorfed. I don't think so. On their equipment. Oh, wait, really? They don't just equip. How does... Oh, that's really odd. Yeah, why is that a thing? Yeah. So... Yeah, why did they do it like that? 
So for example, if I have guard, if I go from Empress to Guard Stick, it moves all my materia over. If I go from Guard Stick to Scepter, it moves all my materia over. But if I have too much materia when I move over, it doesn't just unequip it. It sticks to the weapon. And now, if I unequip Barrier Healing Precision, that materia is still stuck there. And it doesn't show up in any other menu. So, like, you, that materia is gone until you get it off that weapon, or you just notice it in the menu that, like, oh, she has this random materia equipped. But if you go in here, you can see it. So it's not, like, completely disappeared, but if you're not going in that menu and you're just over here moving materia around, you can't see it anywhere. You can't see it from any of these menus. The only menu you can see it is in the, the main materia list. And if you go to her weapon, you can see that there's another materia on there. Why not just remove it? I can't think of a single instance where I would want a materia on a weapon I don't have equipped. Like, just remove it. Just remove it so I can see all my materia in one spot. I, I wouldn't call this a mechanic. <laughs> it's not doing anything. It's not really a preset. It's just a random materia sitting there. It's not like I can have like a set. It's not like I can say like, okay, every time I equipped Riz Wizard's Rod, I want this materia. Because all the rest of the materia is gone. Yeah, but I can't imagine anyone actually doing that on purpose. Like, what would be the scenario other than, like, a speedrunner who wants this materia later but has to equip an old weapon for some reason? There's a purpose later? If there is, I guess we'll wait and see then. But... Like, I can understand if there's like a... a if you're like, okay, Wizard's Rod, I always want Fire, Ice, Restore, blah blah blah. And then every time you equip Wizard's Rod, it has like a pre-built build. But that's not at all what this is. This is just there wasn't enough materia slots for the thing I was equipping, so it leaves one behind. It's not a, like, a preset. It's just leaving a materia behind. The only, the only thing this benefits is if, like, if I equip Wizard's Rod and I give myself all my materia I want, And then I'm like, you know what? I want to use guard stick for this fight. So I go guard stick, but then I also want this specific materia setup. I don't want the other two. Like you have to literally plan out, like I want to remove exactly these two materia. So I want this exact setup. And then later I want to go back to wizard's rod and I want this specific setup again. Like what are the chances of that? <laughs> What are the chances that these are the two materia you want to leave out when you switch to guard stick? Like, there's no shot that's actually what you're doing. Like, maybe in a speedrun scenario where you have all this planned out from the beginning of the game and you know exactly where you're gonna... But, like, normally? No way. 
There's no way you're doing that on purpose. Now, loadout would be kind of cool, yeah. No, no, there's no... You're, you're, you're missing what's... You're missing what's going on here. This is not... You're, it's literally trying to stick these four materia into guard stick, and it can't fit, so it's leaving one. It's not copying anything or load out anything. It's literally just leaving a materia behind because there's no room for it. Instead of unequipping it. So, like, right now I have this materia on Yuffie that I didn't even know existed. Because it's sitting on her four point. And I didn't know until I looked in the menu and saw it. Yeah, it's pretty odd. I, I can't imagine why that... I mean, people were saying it's the same in Remake, so I doubt it was on accident. I doubt it's like a mistake, but what a weird choice. It would be way more intuitive to just remove the materia. Like, if I asked you guys, I have a weapon with four materia slots, and now I'm equipping a three materia slot weapon, what do you think's gonna happen? Everyone would say the fourth one will get put back in your inventory. That, that would be the intuitive way to do it. That's what everyone would imagine would happen before playing the game. So in, or in order to do something different, it should have, like, a purpose. Because that's obviously the intuitive choice. You won't hold that. And I know it is technically in your inventory because it does still show up in that thing, but still. You know what I mean. Like, it should be completely removed and put in your inventory. Whatever. It's not that important. Moving on. Also, battle version of this theme is incredible also. I'm liking all these big staircases. It's Mount Coral has all those big staircases. What's that arrow? Beyblade dog! Oh god, they have gravity. No, there is. There's, you can swap, you can swap in this menu, like, two materia in your own menu, and then you can also go to this menu and swap anyone. You can't swap an entire person, but you can swap like, around. But, to go along with my point that I just made, if there's a random materia sitting on Yuffie's weapon that we don't know about, when you go into this screen, it won't be here. Because it's on her other weapon. The entire person? No, you can't. Which is funny, because you can in the original. But it's not really a big deal. I, I would it, I would really like to have it, though, because the game is putting us in these scenarios all the time where it's switching our characters. So it would really be nice to have that option. Just because it is making us use different party groups quite often. Which I like a lot, but yeah, that would be a nice option. It is, yeah. 
but it is kind of currently equipped, just on the wrong weapon. <laughs> How'd you get to that screen? Materia and then hit the touchpad. When I first went to that screen, half my chat was like, wait, what? So you're not alone. Let's switch it up, lady. It does say in the bottom right hand corner, but there's no tutorial for it, which is funny because, you know, this game really likes tutorials, but not the okay. stuff that's actually useful. Yeah, down there it says set for all. Was I gonna check? Oh yeah. Oh, not that. Dude, this always like bothers me. <laughs> this <laughs> the screen bothers me. I see 75 out of 100, 110 and I'm like, oh, I can use those points. I can't use those points. I'm like, I'm like scratching. I'm like, I want to use those points. It says 75 out of 110. Oh. Uh, okay. I want to see what I had to do for this. Finish off an enemy with a standard attack launched from within the ward. What? That's very specific. It has to be a standard attack, even though the point of it is to cast spells in it. saying huh is the point of it to cast spells brother it literally says no I'm not speaking on arcane ward I'm speaking on freaking radiant ward conjure a ward that grants invincibility while casting spells for spells. It might also work for standard attacks, but it's for spells. I would imagine the best use for it is uh, for healing. I need to make some stuff. I'd, yeah, I'd imagine the best thing for it would be to, to cast healing spells in it so you don't get interrupted. Strengthens basic attacks. It did say that, didn't it? Yeah, strengthens air's basic attack. So, okay. I guess it makes sense. <laughs> you got me, you win. You won. Why is death always so angry? Because the second I say anything, my chat always goes, huh? What? What do you mean? Uh, I don't really have anything else to make other than this stuff. You can make this with the four slots. Wait. Why does it... Oh, no. I need to make something new. I guess I can make one of these.
Oh, well then that's fine. Okay. Man, I have max of this stuff though, so I kind of want to use it. We need antidotes. Guess I can make some cushions. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It, it, I mean, it's e it's easier it's easier with this game to like give valid criticism because it's new. But if I give valid criticism for an older game that people like, forget it. I'm dead. Like Final Fantasy 15, every single thing I say is torn apart to shreds until we can figure out why I'm wrong. I can't just give a comment. It's like, well, technically this is why you're wrong for everything I say. even if it's an opinion because there are people that enjoy the game this is a new game everyone's still trying to form their opinions on it so it's okay to give opinions but giving an opinion of an old game forget it there's people that played it and now it's their favorite game so screw me if I have any criticism on it it's their favorite game how dare you criticize it Poison caps, but they're not poison caps anymore. They're also freaking dead, holy cow. Do you think people... Go, going off of what you said there, Carrie. Do you think people create their opinions on games too quickly. Like, I, I try to wait. I try to, to give positive and negative criticism all the way through the game, but I try not to come up with, like, a truly I love it, I hate it, or, like, it's a 9 out of 10, 10 out of 10, whatever. Until I'm not only done with it, but, like, completely done with it. My remake uh review I didn't release until I literally like challenge ran the top secrets mode and done literally everything and platinum the game. Which not everyone can do that. I know that like IGN and stuff they can't they they really have to like get the game early, play like twenty hours of it and then give their review because that's all the time they have. Which is why I think review sites tend to have really bizarre review scores sometimes because they just don't have enough time to really understand everything there is to understand about the game both from like a gameplay perspective and like a community perspective you know i can kind of collect the entire community's thoughts and feelings on a game plus like the post game of it how people are enjoying it a week later how people are enjoying it a month later if it has replayability if the online gameplay is good, like all these things that you can't really figure out until like two or three weeks after a game releases. Big, you know, companies that are doing the reviews days before the game even comes out, they don't really have that luxury. They can play the game single player for like two days and then they have to come up with their entire review. So, you know, as much as we like to laugh at them, it, it is kind of a tough gig. It's tough to really form a true, truly good review of a game when, you, when you're missing all that context. Especially in today's world where most games have an online aspect. Like, think about something like a fighting game. Like, how do you truly review a fighting game days before it releases? So much of it hinges on, like, the balance and the online experience and the 
play replayability and you know so many things that you just cannot know until months after the game comes out three handfuls of gold dust it's on you Right, hold on, let me see this, uh... This one's for you. Power attack. Holy cow, it's like a laser beam! Oh my god! I'm freaking Xemnas, what the... That's insane! Barrett and Yuffie were here. Also, if I can be, if I can be actually serious for a moment, uh, I'm not angry. I'm very rarely angry. If I'm yelling, it's always passion. It's always me being very passionate about this game and about the experience and about all of us experiencing the game. And I'm just very passionate about what I do, and I think that criticizing games is important. So that's why I get loud. I, I very rarely get angry, actually angry. If I'm actually angry, you will know that I'm actually angry. It's happened like twice, and my chat still has the nightmares. So, just so you know, being serious for a moment, I'm not angry. I'm just passionate. Chat. Chat still tells of the time that I was truly angry and no one slept for a week. Don't overdo it. Can I? What is this? What is this sound effect in the background of this song? The ba 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 ba. It sounds like a piano, but it's not. It kind of sounds like a glockenspiel. But it it might just be a synth. I don't know. But it's like the best thing I've ever heard in my life. I get hype every time I hear it. Bring it. It sounds like a synth, but like, I think it's a synth, but it sounds like a glockenspiel. It's that it's that eighties that eighties sound effect that's in like every uh every retro wave song. This right here. Reminds you of old Sonic the Hedgehog soundtrack? True. I feel it. Yeah, it's it's definitely got to be a synth, but it's got that it's got that glockenspiel. I could I could imagine I could imagine Nabuo behind his little keyboard, and he has it set to that sound effect, and they're playing this song. the The Black Mages are playing this song, and he's just like jamming in the back. Ba 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 ba. Like I could totally see it. <laughs> I could 100% see it. I think that might happen in the future. I'm gonna I'm gonna buy a Glockenspiel and I'm gonna call it Gother Domin Room. And we're gonna start a band. Me and you together. We're gonna be a German folk band. It's gonna be great. Zoo can play the bagpipes. 
that's gonna be perfect. We're all gonna wear kilts. Someone, we, we can have Browns play the electric triangle. Oh my god. I can't get over this laser move. She straight up looks like Xemnas. I thought the game was Kingdom Hearts before. Now we are the Kingdom Hearts. How's it going, Lord? I'm loving it, man. Absolutely loving it. Yes, I've had my criticisms, but my criticisms are more of like ways the game could improve and not like actual things that are hurting the game much. Like I've seen a lot of ways that they could have improved or like done something differently, but very little actual negative complaints about the game. It's really, really incredible. True, Ace. True. How could I? Aerith is a turtle. I hope you guys get that joke. Deal with that. You probably don't. <laughs> a little magic. You know what? I'm just going to leave it there. I'm not going to explain it. I'm just going to leave it there. I think that's a safe play place to leave it. It's not boomer humor. It's weeb humor. Okay? There's a difference. A very big difference, actually. Come to think of it. You really you really do get like the whole package with 4-8 productions. You get boomer humor and weeb humor. You're not getting that anywhere else on the internet. Where else could you get boomer humor and weeb humor? Those are two complete opposites, and you get them both here. That's insane. I really am the whole streaming package. <laughs> It's pretty wild. What are your weaknesses? Ice. Do you have ice? Yes, you do. In fact, you can even use your new ability for ice. These things don't really attack much, they use magic. And right when I say that, he does. And now he's done. You aren't in my friend's Discord channel. Alright, fair. That's fair. What happens in the Discord channel stays in the Discord channel. Alright, hit me, it'll be funny. Hit me, it'll be funny, because you're weak against ice, and it'll be like, boom, and then you'll die a horrible death. No, attack me! Attack the doggo. Oh! What? I really didn't do much, I'm gonna be honest. That was, that was pretty... That was pretty unfortunate. It's pretty, pretty anticlimactic, I'll be honest. Yep, we're on our way to Mount Coral, or I guess this is technically Mount Coral now. Everything blends in so well that it's hard to even tell when things start and end. But I, I guess when we split up, that was technically the start of Mount Coral. The old ropeway. I'm kind of just putzing around because... We only have like 15 more minutes and I didn't want to jump into another cutscene. 
Just going around whacking stuff. Trying to get the proficiencies on our weapons here. Yeah, I've liked the side quest quite a bit so far. Um, honestly, I think the only side quests that I thought were like kind of lame or like didn't make sense or whatever were actually main quests. <laughs> like the main side quests in Costa del Sol, there were some that I was like, these are weird. Like just the, the story, the attempt to make a story out of them was kind of dumb. Um, but like the actual side quests, I don't... I didn't really like the Kyrie one very much. I don't really, I still don't really understand what she adds to the game. I'm hoping that later she becomes more important because right now she just seems like a distraction. But the other ones I felt like did pretty good to like world build and like the Chadley ones, all of them are super fun. All the stuff on the main map is super fun. Like I genuinely enjoy getting the crystals, getting the intel, fighting the fights, doing the stuff with the thugs, like, all of it's super fun. So all the open world stuff I love. But in terms of, like, the green side quests, I've only done a few, but I've liked the ones that I've done. Don't overdo it. We Go for it. Here goes. Gravity seems pretty strong. No, I haven't 100%ed really anything yet. I've done like 50% and then done the full strength summon and then moved on. Do you like this car or this load screen? The choice is yours. How's it going, Tamari? Good to see you, man. The uh, the alerts are currently paused because we're doing a let's play, but it'll play later. Apologies for the waste of points. I will refund you with a kiss. You're welcome. Why are you staring? Why are you staring? I'm allowed to kiss whoever I want. I guess technically no, I'm not. With approval, I'm allowed to kiss whoever I want. <laughs> How's it going, cowboy? What do you mean I can't go back? Oh, because we're split up, of course. Makes sense. Yeah, we uh, we had daylight savings time on Sunday, so we're uh, an hour early. Hour early to start, hour early to end. Sorry for everyone across the pond who are like, what the heck's a daylight savings time? The answer is, I don't know either. It's dumb, that's what it is. That's right, you guys do like daylight savings time, it's just later, right? Does anyone not do it at all? Does anyone here live in a country where they just straight up don't do it? And also, are they accepting applications to live there? This is my, my follow-up. Wait, they don't do daylight savings time in Arizona? No shot. Yes, yeah, is the rune blade. 
Really? What's going on in Arizona? Wait, so that... Do they not follow the standard, like... Like, time zones? Like, what time zone are they in? Does the whole time zone not do it, or only Arizona? Because in which case, like, you'd have to look up Arizona time if you want Arizona time versus anyone else on that vertical. Oh, they just change zones completely. I never knew this. So instead of changing their time, they change their time zone. I never knew this. That's kind of smart. Why can't we do that? Can Ohio do this? I'll be honest. To be completely honest, that might actually be more confusing. <laughs> like, if someone asks me what time zone I'm in, I'm gonna have to be like, wait, what month is it? You know what I mean? Because it's not like an active thing you're doing. It's just gonna change one day. So being someone that talks to people out of my time zone constantly, I would have to actually remember, like, when we switch time zones and remember which one we're in. Like, daylight savings time is annoying, but at least now I can just look at the clock and know what time it is. And I always know that we're in Eastern. But I have that, with that, I would have to keep track. Let me get my grabbing gun. What, what time zone are you in? Hold on, you pull out like a like an antenna and like one of those old things they use to like read the stars on the pirate ships. Well, if I look at the stars here, if I see where Saturn is at, I correlate that with the northern star. Yeah, a sextant. A sextant and an abacus. I can tell you exactly what time zone I'm in. <laughs> Just give me like five minutes. <laughs> I love that I can just run around and enemies respawn. I mean, that's kind of a normal thing, but... Given how small this zone is, I actually wouldn't have been surprised if I had to like leave and come back for the enemies to come back. But you can just run around. Really nice. Don't overdo it. Keep it together. I'll show you what I can do. Go on. What if we just purchase space? Sounds like something Elon Musk would say. What if we just purchase space? If we own space, no one else can fly there. That was weird. I know what an abacus is. Maybe you had to use an abacus once in class as like a little joke. Like our math teacher was like, get ready for this math test. And then we all pulled out our calculators and then she was like, nope, you're using these. And I pulled out an abacus. Moving on then. And that was probably the one and only time I ever used one. Don't, uh, like really quick, like speed mathematicians, don't they use abacuses instead of calculators? Isn't it faster to use an abacus? I thought I read that somewhere. That, that might have been a... That might have been like a, a Reddit post, though. That might have been like a Twitter... Twitter post that I shouldn't have taken seriously. I thought I remembered seeing like some video of like these students like quickly 
moving abacus back and forth. I don't remember what that was, though. Could have just been they didn't have calculators. Could have been an onion article, possibly. I mean, I can't imagine what kind of math an abacus would be faster than just pushing the buttons, but I don't know. I don't. I don't, I don't speed math. The mind is the most powerful abacus. That's true. It's it's you can you can move an abacus as fast as you can move, whereas a calculator you're limited to a machine. Well, I don't know. This is this this conversation's going nowhere. I think. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, all right. Let's stop for today. Uh, what a crazy, crazy, awesome day today was. Uh, we hit absolute peak meme today. Uh, as I said before, I think the game's going to get more serious from here on out, with the exception of Gold Saucer being probably goofy. But we got through the, the goofy section. I think this is forever going to be known as the goofy section. Junon, Boat, and Cosa del Sol all together. It's just one giant meme. A very fun meme. A very funny and entertaining meme. But kind of a giant meme. Um, so hopefully tomorrow we get into some real mechanical fun to offset the fan service chapters. Uh, but regardless, no matter what, it was still really fun. We had quite the laugh today. <laughs> um, and yeah, man, game just continues to give. Whenever I think, okay, we finally hit the final mini game, we get like nine more that are all fun. I'm still blown away by Costa del Sol, literally giving us like six more completely unique mini games. The shooting gallery, the football, the queen's blood, but with a twist. Um, what else? Well, the, the taking pictures of the Cactuar was kind of a mini game, but kind of eh, same with the, the driving the wheelies. But yeah, man, just crazy. I mean, it just continues to push what? Oh, in the piano, which I mean, we, we already did play the piano once, but we didn't have it. If we're if we're removing the demo, this is the first time you actually had to play a song. So um, yeah, man. And they're all fun, and they're all well put together. I just, you, I never would have expected, if you had told me that the game was going to have this many different mechanics and minigames, I would have said, oh no, it's going to all be crap, you know? Thinking, like, back to some of the other games that Square has done with stuff like this. I mean, the minigames in this game are better put together than the entirety of Chocobo GP as a video game. <laughs> as a $70... Actually, I think it was $50. $50 video game. That game had less depth going on. It's like half the mini games in this game. So, um, yeah, man. I'm just, it, it's incredibly impressive what they were able to do. And I said it last week, you know, this game took four years to make and it's on the same engine as Remake. So, like, where did the four years go? Well, we know now where the four years went. Just, just straight content. Just as much content as they could truly shove into this game. They took four years and they just made everything they possibly could. And like we said before, it's not a little bit of everything. It's a lot of bit of everything. It's so much of everything and everything is so well put together and so well made. It's just impressive, man. If, if nothing else, the one word I can describe it as is impressive. It's impressive how much they were able to do here. 
Um, but saying that, I do hope that tomorrow we really get into like some bosses, some materia setups, some mechanical stuff. We got Yuffie now to mess around with. Um, so I'm hoping to see some more battle mechanic stuff coming up. And hopefully after Mount Nebel, we get another big area to explore. Because we got a little area to explore, but there wasn't a lot to do in there. So I want another big area. Um, so hopefully we get all that tomorrow. But for now, we're going to say goodbye to YouTube. YouTube, thank you so much for watching. Let's play Final Fantasy Rebirth. I look forward to all of your opinions of everything we talked about today, good or bad. And uh, continue to discuss. Continue to discuss this game because... As I've said in the past, it is very important to let Square know what we think. And I know some people will say, like, Square doesn't listen. They listen. They do so much. Like, take it from me and take it from some of the bigger content creators that are closer knit with Square Enix. They listen. They absolutely listen. Um, so continue talking about what could be improved in this game. I know I was pretty critical today. But there's a reason for that, because being critical is important. There is a third game on the horizon, and the third game is going to take as much from this game as this game took from Remake. There was a lot of things we talked about in Remake that were specifically improved in this game. For example, the aerial combat. And so talking about how this game can be better in a critical but productive way is very, very important. And that's why I'm so passionate about talking about the criticisms. I know sometimes I can go on and on about it, but it is important to talk about and, you know, giving the game its merits, but also talking about how it can improve is only going to make the third game better. So continue to talk about the criticisms and continue to discuss all of your opinions about the game. I look forward to reading them all and we will see you in the next episodes of Let's Play Final Fantasy VII. Rebirth. We'll see you there. Peace.